Hi everybody. Today's weird project is a DIY digital microscope. I picked up this classical style microscope on eBay for $18. It had some issues. The uh, adjustment knobs didn't move. This thing was completely frozen. I ended up having to take the whole thing apart and actually hammer these sections apart in order to uh, shim the metal plates that had gotten stuck and get everything working again, re-greasing it. Now, $18 for a microscope is, is not bad. This one is not the best microscope in the world. It's got a 4X uh, magnifier, a 10X, and a 40X combined with the 10X eyepiece. So this is a maximum 400X microscope by default. You can get replacement eyepieces. Uh, I think you can get them that go up to 30, so you can make this a 1200, but that's not really what I'm going to use it for. Now, there are some issues when you try to do recording on a microscope. If you take a camera of any sort and you just put it up to the lens, you don't really get anything usable out of this. Now, if you catch the light just right from a distance, you can kind of sort of focus it, but you have to be a ways away from it, and it doesn't really fill the screen properly. So, trying to attach a lens to this really doesn't work, especially if you're trying to do like a webcam setup so that you can do a recording. So, how can you easily put a cheap webcam onto one of these and make the equivalent of a $450 microscope out of this? So, I've got here one of these cheap eBay pop-a-look cameras. Uh, I got this one on Amazon. I think I paid $17, but usually they're about 21 bucks. I just, you know, business price issues. And these things, a couple screws in the back. You just pull them apart. There's generally screws holding this in. And you worry about this section here. Now, this is a manual focus webcam. Any manual focus webcam will, in theory, work with this. So when you take this apart, the first thing you're going to need to do is pop this silver section off, which usually isn't too bad. Then you've got a couple of options here. This entire section here screws out, and this front piece comes off. Now, you will need pliers to remove this because it is glued on. And the rest of this, you can remove. So option number one for making this work as an eyepiece. Now the focus knob has three lenses in it. You've got this lens here in the front. You've got another clear lens that's about the same size as this in the middle. And then you've got this in the back. And what you want to do uh, for this particular option is take all of the lenses out. You're going to have to pop the UV filter off push them through with something. I used a chopstick. Uh, take out the plastic separators, take out these lenses, and put the middle lens back in in the orientation that it was in, which is the rounded section facing the back. So if this was the middle lens, you'd put it in this way. And this removes a lot of the light gathering and focusing and things that are in the optics in these cameras that cause that pinhole of light when you're trying to view it through the microscope. So when you reassemble this, you end up with a camera which is very out of focus. But when you take this and you put it onto the eyepiece, you can actually get a focusable image. Now, this is a little bit too far in. What you're going to want to do is adjust the knob in or out until you get a filled view area on your display. So you can see here, unscrewing it slightly, I get a better image. It's a bit bigger. It fills more of the display. If I do a little bit more, I've now got basically the entire 1080p field. Now there's some lines on this because my eyepiece is all scratched up. I've made some custom 3D models. This one is the one that I've printed for this design. It's got a longer tube on the inside to accommodate the camera body and the adjustment knob. And then it's got a piece that slides over the eyepiece. And I'll have this and my other one available as downloadable 3D models in the description. And you can 
download those and 3D print them if you want. So with that in place, I can now use the adjuster knob and get a good focus picture. Now this doesn't look like it's great, but it's because it's going through what's essentially opaque plastic. So this is not a great thing to be doing here. This is just really to illustrate the size. So if you notice this, this is about 10 squares across. That's the size that we're dealing with. So the other option that you have for making this work is removing your eyepiece entirely. Now, these are usually removable by design. Sometimes they will have a small screw right here. You just pull the screw out, your eyepiece will come out. And to make this work, you just remove this focus knob completely. So that all you've got is this plastic piece, and you can see the light sensor there directly. Now, in playing with this and adjusting things and adjusting spacing and things, I've accidentally gotten a little bit of stuff on here. You can see there's a, a hair over there in the corner. Um, I don't know if the... Yeah, there, there's the rest of it. So I, I blew in it. I got a little tiny bit of spittle on it. I wasn't really being very careful. Uh, I knew that would happen. I just, you know, didn't, didn't really care a whole lot. So um, I've got this smaller piece then. You can see compared to this eyepiece, or this adapter, it's quite a bit shorter. This one only has an inner ring for this plastic piece. This plastic piece has some grease on it. So I left a little bit of a ridge on the inside of here to make sure that that can't contact with anything. Now you have two options when you use this one. The first one is you can just drop it in directly, focus up your knob, and here's the same view, except now there's a little bit less than two of these squares visible, which means that this is five times higher magnification, so this is now 50x. And that means that the minimum that this camera will do, or this microscope, I'm sorry, will do is no longer 40x, the minimum is now 200. And that also means that when we put it on the 40x lens, that we're actually dealing with 2000x magnification. Now, it will do, 2000x, but let me see if I can get a, a focus where it'll actually give any sort of an image. It's very picky at 2000x. The optics on this and the adjustment knobs really weren't meant for it. Um, yep, there, that's about all there is to see on this piece of plastic at 2000x. So, this isn't a terribly useful demonstration. But if we pop, pop over to the uh, 500X, you can see there's, there's quite a bit of detail in here. Now, unfortunately, when you go up to the 2000X, it's really zooming in right here, where there's nothing going on. Uh, so there's nothing to focus on to demonstrate it, but it does work. I've done it with some other stuff. So you can go directly on with that, and you'll get about a 50X. The other thing that you can do is the eyepiece here is actually two lenses. And the top lens is your magnifier, and my understanding is it's a little bit more than 10x, because this is a focusing lens, and it does a very, very slight demagnification. And if you take this lens and you put it in, and you pop this back over it, let's go back down to the... Uh, 4x and adjust it again. Now you can see there's more than two squares here. So now we're down to probably about a 40x magnification instead of a 50x. So total now we can go about 160 up to, what would that be, 1600 I guess. Um, so you can do a little bit of a play there. The only way you're really gonna get the original view though is keeping it combined and using this focusing knob. Now, for a lot of the things that I'm gonna be doing, starting at 200X is great. But, you know, if you're trying to get a good view of something like uh, a scud or a brine shrimp or something like that, then Starting at 200 is, is a bit of overkill, even 160 is, is a bit too much, so 
I, I had to play around with this to figure out how this works. Uh, I don't know if this is something that any of you guys will find useful or not, but it's something that I'm going to be using quite a bit in some of my future videos. So I figured since I was figuring up how to do it, that, you know, a, a 2 megapixel digital microscope for 36 bucks is an interesting thing to do. You can find these at garage sales or... Uh, if hospitals are closing or things like that, you can pick them up for five or six bucks. They're pretty easy to get cheaply. I just didn't want to wait to find it, so I got one online. But it's an easy project. It's not really any worse quality than going out and buying one of the pre-made ones. Uh, if you have to do some maintenance, it at least teaches you how these things work. Now, they do sell some pre-done cameras for these that just slide in where the eyepiece would be. They have preset magnifications on them. They run about $70. So this way saves about 50 bucks, and it just takes about five minutes to take everything apart and do this. You don't need to have this eyepiece. You can just hold this here with anything, with a piece of cardboard. You can cut some construction paper to hold it. Uh, this is just because I've got a 3D printer that I'm going to be using for making some custom media and things like that in the future. This is the only reason I'm doing this. And again, I'm going to have the model for this and this down in the description. This one I'm just going to call long. This one I'm going to call short. Uh, they take about an hour to print out at decent quality. I don't have any weird details in them that's going to cause any problems. So if you've got a 3D printer or you know somebody with a 3D printer, you can knock one of these out really easily and get something usable that looks pretty good and blocks out almost all of the light for pennies. Anyways, hope you guys found that to be something interesting or useful, and uh, we'll see you next time.